Right, here we are back in the shed at last after lockdown we're now allowed to be here although we are keeping our two meters in fact in my case five meters away from Jeff over there in the corner and Jeff I see you've brought down an awful lot of aluminium bits and bobs here by your frame here what's all this about oh, have you had a bit of a sort out have you I'm not going to have a sort out I've just I was sick and tired of all them bits up on the shelves oh right you've moved them have you uh, well what I want to do in the next period mm -hmm. I don't need to use the little horizontal miller and I want to set the dividing head up. I've got the tooth pulley, me yeah. cutter for doing the teeth. Oh right, so, so you're going to gonna convert up. these things into pulleys basically. Uh, it's not, belt pulleys. it's not the, I. It, it's a imperial yeah. tooth cutter, I'll show you okay. in a minute. Okay. Just... okay, so I've now put the camera a bit closer to you Jeff, where yeah. I'm going to walk away way over here. On the side of the right. And um, talk about what on earth you're doing today. I see you've got some crankcases, some Z crankcases, and a block. That block looks vaguely familiar to me. That's the one that you've just had that bit of weld done. Yes, there. Yeah, yeah, we had it's, some welds done. Yeah, and, uh, uh, it's a, it's going on the uh, U track project. project, and I believe it's now going to be what 1500 cc. That is a 1500 block. I've right. got the liners. And where did that block come from? It, I bought it off eBay. Okay, some time ago. But one of the pistons has got a few scuffs in it. Mm -hmm. Um, is that the one you're going to fit some sort of uh, MG or some car based no, piston? No, okay. no. The, so the, what pistons is this? Is the this has got the forged? Oh, forged. Forged pistons. Unfortunately, originally it's got a few scuffs. Oh well. Um, can, yes, I can it, see that from here. What I'm intending to do then is I'll take the rings off. Mm -hmm. And what Kawasaki is a very short of is a good oil supply. Mm -hmm. So. We'll pop them in the lathe, we'll put about three grooves round it, mm -hmm. little ball grooves, right. or maybe four, I don't yeah, know yet, yeah. depending on, what's on it. it. Yeah. Oh, only about a millimetre deep, if yeah. that. And what's going to go in there? Uh, so we'll... Well, when it's in the bore, if we drill the back of the block and fit an oil supply right. and feed the skirt faces with oil. Will it smoke a bit, though, for that? I mean, no, it's be below careful. the oil ring. All right, well, OK. Well, because it's only... Is that something that drag... Drag uh, well, Kawasaki's have. This. I noticed it on, on a bike that I'd seen at the pod right, years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And what happens is, it's it's essential with a supercharged motor as well. Yeah. Unless you've got shell bearing, which we don't crank. Oh, no, no. And you can actually put oil holes in the rod, over uh, to comp uh, and actually you get two jets of oil going right. into the right. onto the cylinder walls. Okay. And with the pressure and fuel in a supercharged motor mm -hmm. it has a tendency to rapidly wash Wear out. rapidly wash whatever oil there is there away yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it makes sense in my opinion to help it yeah, help it, it, uh, help it out. okay so now we've come okay, well, out we to the outer shed the outer extension yeah. ages. and here we have your lovely leaves, months newly months. painted anyway that's just that's so town wood house limited what's going on lathe that you're working on rebuilt and it took a long time i believe you're working on it weeks and weeks and weeks oh yeah it's done it's done now i've still it's all nice and clean gleaming yes but you might look at that in a minute and uh that's the biggest one is it that's going to be size what three four five hundred quid it's you can spend three four five hundred quid having all the way back yes and it's junk and then finding out it's an absolute load of worn out junk junk i mean don't get me wrong that is not uh, well, all the everything in the headstock's perfect. There's one of the gears that makes a bit of a whine, mm -hmm. but it's all. But didn't you have to machine some extra spaces and whatever and bushes in that gearbox to make it all work? I thought you were machining some. I can't remember. Uh, no, what I did to get the taper rollers in. Yeah. You can't just knock the buggers in. No. So I had to machine two special. Uh, I suppose the best way to describe them would be sort of like top hats. Right. Yeah. And I put a piece of 16 mil stud in mm -hmm. right through. Yeah. So the bearings. It just there's a few thou float just on each one, uh, and then when the bearings, it, you just nip them in and it pulls them in. Yes. Perfect. So now this but is all working. You've got a new, new motor on it or newish motor. There's a two horsepower motor on it. The yeah. only mistake I might have made. Yeah, is what? And it sometimes I don't know if it's a faulty switch, but when it's been running, because it's oh, only, it overheated did it or something? No, it's in, it's it's maximum eleven amps, mm -hmm. and the motor's eleven amps. So if you really put power on the motor, push it, it might it can out. trip it out. Yeah. Uh, 
ideally I could do with getting one that goes probably up to about 15 or something. At least 12 or 13. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's. Well, I'm sure we can find on. one. So, but it's working as long as you don't really start taking like two or three cuts. mil cuts yeah. off yeah. steel, you, you're okay. Okay, brilliant. Um, but so, the question is then, what happens to your old lay that's over there? And you for a tip, if anyone's out there watching, yeah. I mean, you don't have to do it, and mm -hmm. many people have turned around and said, well, why are you doing it? Yes, is what? Um, all the oil effects have been done. Yeah. I've, ne I've never seen it done on a machine. What's and, that? And my tailstock now mm -hmm. has got oiler pots on it. Oh, right. So it's... Nice and slidey. It's got a little groove. There's one on the other side for the V. Yeah. yeah. And... It keeps a constant, as long as you keep dropping oil on it. Yes, it, well, I like them, yeah. What has happened with this, it's worn. So I've had to use, I've had to shim it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the way I shimmed it, actually, uh, when I machined it, I machined in chalk, mm -hmm. I machined a steel bar to the size of the tailstock. Yeah. And then I just slid it together up here and then found the shims. Because obviously it's a slightly thicker shim at the front. Because over the years, it's worn from that. People pushing them from there, it tends to put force on the front. Yeah. And over many, many years, it's worn a little bit. It wears it away. Yeah. So it's now to within at least a thou or two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, to get, I mean, even a new lathe, you probably wouldn't get that accurate. Yeah. Well, so you're happy with it anyway? Oh, I'm more than happy with it. Everything's Good. spot on. Which begs the question, what happens to your old little lathe over there, your little club? Well, it's all for sale. For sale, okay. And that just needs maybe a new motor. What I could do with now is something smaller than that that's just like a little bench one. Yes. If you just want to do... A small spacer. Something with like a little three or a four inch yeah. chuck on it. Yeah. Because yeah. that now is a bit... Th this will do what 90% do. or more do. than what that would yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, okay. And that bloody thing will... So, yeah. So that big thing is, that's, that's next for your uh, <laughs> restoration, isn't it? Your big Mitchell. Yeah. Okay, but if anybody wants That's to buy, I've got to get it done because I've got to borrow my crank. Oh, no, no, I finish no. off doing them. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. got the bed. Yes, it's big enough. It's a bolt fitting, so I can make whatever I want. Yes. So sometimes you have two lathes. Right. There are there are times when you do something on a lathe, you might want to machine something else on it, and you can't take out. Yes, what you're doing. Oh, no. What you're doing. So it's... that Mitchell cub then that's over there. No, it's not Mitchell. Is it? It's, That's it's a Churchill. Churchill. Yeah. Let me just. Go... Yeah. Well, if you go in there now, and I'll follow you in, keeping distance, of course, keeping distance. And we'll do a quick advert. Let's have a look at this. Right, yeah, so we've seen this lathe in use an awful lot from Jeff. It's a Churchill that. Cub. You've had loads of work done on it. So what's wrong with it? Is it, it the motor's a bit tired? What's happening at the minute, it's working. Yeah. Uh, but it's, if you, if you put a lot of power on it, I noticed the motor was getting very hot and it's starting to, it, it's all right at first, but you, it's only, so basically, it just needs a new motor. If, if you try and put hurt it, yeah. I think the motor is probably on its way okay. out. And how? What sort of motor is in that? It's a big two horsepower. Two horsepower. Bloody... Oh, it's down there, is it? Yeah. Okay. In, in fact, you can. You, you can smell it. You can. That electrical. Smell I think it. sometimes I think the okay. whatever's going yes. on the bloody motor. Yeah. Uh, I have another motor down here. Yeah. But. No time. You could you can spend a, a few Day. days. Oh no, oh, no. And then suddenly you find out that the bracket doesn't line up, or it's yeah. not. Yeah. There's there's many problems you come across. Hello. Are we still on here? Yeah. Stay out here. Right. Right. Come back again. That was just, uh, your tea. Right. Okay. Come back here, Jeff. You're in the wrong place there. Come here. Right. I'm just setting oh, back. Oh, you are. Oh, you are. Come back. I want to get them done before. Right. So before we have a drink of tea, um, if someone was going to watch this now and see this local and said, hey, great, I want to buy that, how much would you sell it for? Uh, oh, Christ. Come on. Spit, I out, mean, spit out a number. The, the trouble is, if you're going to sell it, someone could, walk, someone could buy it, they could switch it on, and in an half an hour the motor could go kaput. Yes, but with the knowledge that the motor's tired and it needs replacing. It could carry on working, doing light work for 12 months. Okay, okay, no, it's okay. a gamble. Well, with that yeah. statement, it, the tired, it's got a tired motor in it, how much would you sell it for? Or how much do you want for it? Gold. Come on, this is an advert now. We're online. How much? Well, with all the gear that's with it yes. and, and that. What gear? And it, what well, well, it's forge your chucks, face plates. All the tool holders and everything. Right, so all that will go with it. The, the, there's, there's a lot of tooling with it, uh, various tool holders, uh, all, all the stuff in, like, 
Oh. Quick release tool holders. Okay. Oh, uh, sure. knurling tools. Right. So all that would go with the Oh, lathe. it's all, because it's all, I've got all the bigger stuff right. for okay. the other one. Well, go on then, spit out a number. Eh? So how much? Five hundred pound? Two pound? A thousand pound? Ten thousand pound? I don't know. No, it wouldn't. Uh, go on. Well, it's it, painful to say it, but go on. How much? Well, I mean, the stranger came to you without all the gear. If someone wants no, with all the gear that you don't need anyway. So, I'd, I'd, if 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 they put, I don't know, because I know it's it is good. Oh no, oh no. Come, said, on. Uh, come on. If you said eight hundred quid, eight hundred quid. Yeah. For all that, yeah. with all the gear. Yeah. I mean, if someone thinks they're going to get it for two or three hundred no, quid, no. the tool post alone okay. I could probably sell for two or three hundred okay, quid. Okay, okay. And with of course, all, with all the tools. Also, tool of holders. course, also, of course, you've got the issue of moving it because it's a yeah. bloody heavy, big lump. Well, it can, I, I've got facilities here to load onto some into someone's van or yes, on a trailer. Yes, van, but so they'd have to come along with the van and trailer to shift it. You, well, I'm sure you're not going to buy something like this unless you've got well, money, you, though. Well, you never know. You never so know. We're talking about people in the UK here, yeah. aren't we? No, we're talking about people who like lathes. So who knows? <laughs> who knows? Right. So with that, then. We'll stop. Delete, we'll have a quick uh, talk. Yeah. We'll have a quick. No, of course. We'll um, we'll have a quick pause for a cup of tea, and then we'll continue at a distance. Of course, at our two meters distance. Mm -hmm. I'll look at what else you've been working on recently. Right. So we'll now go from talking about lathes to talking about something more interesting. Drag I race I just frame. I just started a, a, a drag race frame. It's it's a comp bike frame or the spares bike. The spares frame. bike frame. Yes. Frame. Well, you it's, say it's a spares bike. I can't say it's a comp bike. Yeah. yeah. No, the comp bikes are long. With two. Up rather large axle stands that yes. I used to have when I had my van. Yes, a long time ago. They've, they've worked out perfect with the two devices now to put the frame in, and actually. Oh, it spins. I, oh God! Th th this is what I'm saying. I can actually, I can actually do that there. All oh, right. I can bolt that. I can tighten the bolt up there so it holds it there. So you can spray that, yep. and then you can turn it. You can then come this way. Right. So you're now prepping it for paint. Yeah, I'm gonna get all that rust off it, yeah, and then I can I can do it. Obviously, I'll have to grip it with that, yes. and then I can hold it there, tighten the two bolts up. Yeah, yeah. You can, or you could put it there. Probably what would be easier to do is just find a block of wood yeah, to, just, to rest just under the, there. Yeah, yeah. So, now, so so it sort of holds it like at ninety yes, degrees. Spin it round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Just stick a block of wood under it, yeah. and actually, it's brilliant because then you know when you're spraying. Right. I've seen, when I used to do them, you used to hang them up and you, and, you, and you were like this and... Trying to see what's going on, yeah. It's very difficult mm. to, and obviously as we get older, it's yeah, much more yeah, comfortable. Just to, like <laughs> now, in terms of colour, you did say you'd, you'd found, yeah. you, you'd got five, or was it five gallons or five litres or something of uh, I'll, if you a want particular to, paint? It's like... What, you, have, not you black. Ever seen, have you ever seen like Suzuki's when they have like a... It's like a, a metallic -y grey black... It's, it's like a gun, gun metal. Gun could metal you call brush. it gun metal grey? I could, yes. Yeah, it's very similar to that. What, what have how long? Been doing? How old is that paint? How long has that been in the canvas? Do, do you know something? And I know. I know you're going to say something. Now. Yeah, go on. Uh, probably it's at least forty years old. Forty years old. I would say. Oh, well. Maybe thirty-five. 40 and will it be all right? And will it be okay to spray? I don't know. Is it? Yeah. It's all right. It's, well, really, it's probably now, full of uh, cancer causing chemicals, that's why. It, if you smell it now and you stir the paint, in my opinion, You'll get it's Ill. as good as it used to be. Uh, it's as good as the day it was put right. in the okay. tin. Fair enough. Uh, so, what we've been doing is going over it with some 80 grade, right. getting, getting all that surface rust off. Yeah. Uh, been going over them with a wire, uh, a wire like brush. a little wire. Yeah. If, if you just get them over there mm -hmm. and hopefully in. It just gets that bit of rust out. Yeah. To be honest, by the time of it's had a coat of etch primer and it's painted, it will stick Look okay. like shit to a blanket. Someone once said to me, I had a tank once and I painted it and I left it outside for about five years and it had rust on like that. Yeah. And you know something, the paint was stuck to it as good as if it, you'd rubbed it clean. Because right. okay. they reckon a, a, a slightly surface rust as long as you get the, any, you don't want any loose particles on it. No. It's it's actually a better key. Is that because it adheres a bit better? Yeah. Better, yeah. The, By the way, before I forget, if you need any more of those wire brushes, I've got a big box at home. Oh, might need a couple. I thought, yeah. you, might. So, I thought you might. I'm just going over it and yeah. rubbing it all down. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a few little nicks and knacks and odd it, little marks. It's, it, a but it's a drag bike, so. It's, once it's painted, mm -hmm. you're bound to put something <coughs> in. I can see myself tightening a bolt up and chipping the bloody paint. Oh yeah, well, you know. Anyway, so 
that's all in hand? That's all in hand at the minute. Okay, now, and while I was looking at the other, so, hang on, let's just spin round, da -da -da -da. way over here, we'll, we'll spin round. Well, hopefully, because this, uh, we've got this like metallic-y gunmetal grey for yes. the frame. Yeah. I've decided, and I think it'll look really cool, you might not agree, is I've got the green, green. and the seat unit is going to be green, oh. with, you know, like the GPZ stripes? Yes. Like a blue, is it like a blue and silver? Yes. Stripe? Yes. So it looks... You like green, don't you? You like your mum, she likes it, green. I like the green because it's mm. just got a sort of a Kawasaki green. Okay, okay. Not the bright green, not the lime green, but the it's, darker green. It, it's, 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 like emerald, it's, it's like emerald green, isn't it? If anyone knows, they used to do a Z650 and it's yes. like a green, emerald, yeah, like a metallic green. It's yes. very, it's like very like similar that. to that. Okay, so we'll look forward to seeing that one day. In the meantime, in the meantime, if the seat unit's still sat in there. Oh. We've got a fab. <laughs> yes, you've got to make the damn thing. We're yeah. running out of room. I know. Yeah. So after Christmas, uh, we got hold of a lot of fiberglass, a lot of resin, all the gear required to I can make do that in here. Yes, to make a mould yeah. from the seat unit you had last time that you made. That's like your puck, isn't it? Or yeah. The puck. You yeah. make a mould and then you make the final seat unit from that, and that's been waiting to be done for, since God only knows January. But I think that kind of thing you have to do when it's nice and warm and dry. Which, uh, well, what's warm, what's not dry this yet. needs painting when it's nice and oh, warm. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get some etch primer as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I also went on the computer for last night. But I reckon you're going to be looking at 20, 25 oh, yeah. for Can't I get it from the uh, paint shop down the road here? You can, but the short time, oh, you can't. Well, okay. I don't, I, I'll buy it when I'm ready. Yes, okay. Or, you know. Uh, right. Okay, cool. Because I a litre, I reckon a litre of price. I think, 15 yeah, because I've got all the frame, you know, if I do yeah, that, all the frame. Good. It's all right, we'll so get some. We'll find some. You only want, I always remember when they put this bloody edge primer on car panels. No. God, did it bite in. Yes, yeah. It's, but it's, if you're going to do it, edge well, primer. Well, I've got some, but it's all best. in rattle cans. I don't think that's quite enough. Uh, no, if I'm going to buy it, what I'll do is I'll buy a litre. Yes. And then you can probably just put a quarter of a litre in. Mm -hmm. Mix it, I don't know, I think it's something like 50-50, and then you put a hardener in it oh, or something yeah, in yeah. it. Uh, or whatever All right, it so it's a two pack. It, I think you put three. I think you put a thinner and a hardener in it, or yeah, something, well, that means a, an activator yeah, or whatever pack, it is. It's yeah. two pack. Yeah. Okay, right. So that we covered. Um, looking back this way, if I spin round, da -da 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 -da, at the back of the workshop there on your Miller, I see some engine cases, which is well, interesting. Well, I've just done. I don't know if you saw them before. No, let's go inside and have a look. Let's go back round. And we'll keep I tell this you what, discussed. You say that, and I'll All go right. round through the other door. Okay. Yes, we'll keep our social distance. Don't worry. Right, okay, so the camera's running. Jeff, if you want to now go and walk towards your miller. Right, are we on? I'll stand back a bit. Right, I'm not. The distance. Uh, what I've done with these. Well, that's the cow. This, this is our tilt table. Yes. It's actually got two bolts in where the, 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 the uh, cases bolt together. It's two bolts bolt in it now with yes. big washers. Yeah. And the only other way I could get that, so I didn't want it bouncing. Nope. I put a G clamp on it. Yeah. And I did the other set, but what I've done now, because that, when I was boring, it was good, the, the little thing in the G clamp was rattling, so right. I put some tape on it. Okay. It was bloody annoying. Yes. Uh, it was going, so what is it you're boring at? Are you widening <laughs> out the... Uh... Uh, these are a set of cases I've had, the, the Z1000J, and I thought, well, while I've got it on, I might as well take them out. All right, you machine the cases too. Uh... I thought, I'll do these, because if I just bore these out now, then I can turn them all over and... Uh, what we're doing? Oh, uh, it's, gone, it's gone somewhere else. Where are you going now, Jack? Uh, wandering off. That's it. Let's keep a stand this bolt. And I've got one eighty mil. Okay. Well, I know they're long enough. What happens oh, is, on. well, hang on, you jumped head there. Oh, sorry. So what? What are you doing here? They are. Uh, once these are bored out to suit yes. the barrels, yes. I, I'm taking them so it'll take a 1325 kit. Okay. Uh, it, you can still put a standard roadblock on it. Mm -hmm. I've just had the roadblock on it um, uh, on its dowels. Yeah. Um, and so, because it's very very difficult. What you? Um, where's our J block? Oh, it's over. Uh, All right. Don't don't worry. Don't worry. Anyway, we put the barrel on on yes. its dowels, yes. and I've machined that cap up with a 20 mil hole. Okay. That drops in the liner. Yeah. And with a 20 mil ground pin, you can just get it so that once it's in and it just spins, and you can set it up on the readout. You can get your two read uh, full uh, datum points, right? Because on the cases here, there, 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 there's no true fit fixing you can, um... where you can get a, a, oh, okay. a, a point. The only thing I can use is a barrel which mm -hmm. I've just had on before right. you uh, got it, just here. to get you. Uh... So, uh, to okay. get it, well, that's, that's um, quite clever. Uh, don't get me wrong. If that goes in, and then I just get with the quill, I just drop the P 
pin in mm -hmm. until it just spins nicely. It could be a thou or two, but when you it's clearance for the liner, yes. a thou or two each way. It's it's, okay. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're doing dowel holes, mm -hmm. it's critical. Yes. You'd find that you'd have trouble if you, if you, if you need dowel holes. So, anyway, we're not doing dowel holes, so it's... It's okay. As long as it's within a couple of thou. So what's this going to be for then? These are just spare. Spare? Well, I like the idea of spare. Um, and of course, I've got, we've got loads of spares, and the only shortage of things, well, what is it's starter motors oh, yes. and, and the starter clutches yes. and bloody alternators. Yes. They are the... Expensive. They expensive. are the hen's teeth. Well, it turns out now. the starter motor is about 120 online, if, if second hand, but £400 plus for a new one. I said, you, yeah, but if you buy a second hand one, it might be tired. You, you might want, it, it could be, unless you know it's come off a working know, bike and see it working. Alternators, you are, might be alternators, buying, aren't, alternators aren't quite that bad. I mean, I think I can just come buy a new I think you can buy a new a set of new windings. Yes, yeah, Let's set about 70, 80 yes, quid, yeah, I believe. Yeah, power cell on, yeah. 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 But even the outside, even the actual alternator cases, uh, it's the gears and all the starter bits as yes. well, yeah. okay. and, and the rotor, rotors you can't get new. Well, unless well, someone got an old. What's stock interesting new one is somewhere. actually, let me just uh, um, get you sorted out here. Anyway, I mean, we have been talking off camera about a future project for me. It may not happen, but I will need an engine for it, and it would have to be a Kawasaki engine. But all that's in the future. That's next year's project. Well, that's why I thought I'd bore these out now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And because I, I might as well, uh, I might as well do them so they'll all fit at least yeah, thirteen and, twenty-seven. And already. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't want to go. It's no point in going any no, bigger. No, than it's a that. road bike. Yeah. I didn't. That, that's why I made the choice with that one. Mm. But fifteen hundred. Yeah. You are. You're taking that much metal away from your studs. There's not much meat left. It's to actually then start. Put low, you, you're up in the power and weakening the cases. It, it, you're going beyond. What's you know, So I, I thought on a road bike it'll be. I mean, okay. somewhat a fifteen hundred Kawasaki supercharged road bike. Oh yes. Now yes. that might have a bit of potential to sell. Well, who knows? Hopefully, or at least get a lot of attention. You'll win lots of prizes. Um, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Right. But, okay. So that's what you're doing there. So what have you got in your hand there, Jeff? What well, are you doing with them? That's that, that's a centre cap. Yes. The, 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 they're all bored. When the when they're done, they're not doweled, but when they, when Kawasaki have them, they, they'll bolt them on, and they'll bore through them. So they will float that way, mm -hmm. but up and down. If you could get one or two that could be, if you try to put one off another set of cases, it could be a fraction loose or a fraction tight. Yes. That is something that you can you gotta check. never know. It, mm. You can get away with it, but you've mm. got to know what you're doing. Yes. Uh, but what I'm doing because they're only eight mils. Of, that are in, and sometimes the threat, the you know, with putting a supercharger on it, and that I'm opening the center cap bolts to ten, ten, ten four, mil. ten mils. Okay. And eight, mil, eight, eight, mil. eight is there. We'll, I don't know. Whether, I think we'll probably end up putting a washer on. Yes. But they might just be a touch too long. But we can always just machine or mm -hmm. take a bit of the okay. bit off. So that's or why. If they, I, or if it's okay. not fouling, we could put a thicker washer on. Okay, so that's but why he wanted me to buy them. That's anyway. why I needed okay. well, they're 75s on the way. would have been yeah, nicer, but they're not available. Yeah, well, you can see yeah, that's a standard bolt. Mm. If you put the 80 next to it, yeah, it's a lot bigger, isn't it? You not can actually bigger. see it's at least another 10 mil longer, yeah. but they don't use the capa capacity of the depth of the hole The yes. hole that's in. Okay. So we can get away with about another 5 mil. Mm -hmm. Okay, which I thought while I'm doing them, I thought. Just do it all. It's yeah. just a nice little extra strengthening tip okay, on cool. them. Cool. Um, um, right, so with that explained. Oh, yes, there is one more thing. Oh, what about the. Oh, don't go away. You're wandering uh, off. You're wandering no, off. I'm just going to pull this oh, back. It's wandering off again. I out, know this is off that. Out of camera. Right, okay. Come back, Jeff. Right. Come back, Jeff. Uh, right, right talking about Kawasaki engines and Kawasaki cases. My Kawasaki case, uppercase, uh, for my project had damage which I've already covered uh, in a well not not no, actually no I've not yeah I've actually covered it in a future video that you've not seen yet but basically um, one of the crank seats where the bearing sit yeah. was damaged it was cracked so in the end we had to grind it all away the pins oh the pins yeah the yeah pins. that's actually when it says some tap in and some just push it yes, yeah. this is why there's some you yeah. know okay so we're gonna this might be confusing because we've not we've not seen the video yet but 
yeah, so it's damaged to the case. So to save the case, because I just had it expensively reconditioned and, and refinished by Camcoat, um, I took it to Jeff Haslam. He ground away the damage because it was cracked all He's the way down. He's welded it, yeah. He built it back up again with weld, so it looked like a right mess, but it was yeah. strong. Brought it to you, and as if by magic, you made it look standard again. Well, uh, and I've had some people say to me, How's, how have you done that? That's not perfect. possible. It's oh, no. not it's good enough though. It's good enough. There's a few little low spots, but it's better off a couple of little low spots than high, high spots. spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, so the did, question is, how do you do it? Um, there, I'm a bit confused by that. Okay, so yes, on my case, this bit here, if I mm -hmm. stand back a bit, there's a big crack here. Not yeah. a big crack, but a crack that could be seen. Yeah. Where that pin, that pin is, yeah. Jeff built it up yes. and then just flowed in well basically um if you imagine this area here was full of weld it's all rough it, that was built up around yes, there yes yeah. so you clean that up i think jeff where it goes narrow there i think he built it in there a little bit but that bit didn't matter no because it's no. not going to hit the crank no. so what i did was i set a milling cutter up i had to use a long one yeah on the tilt table i clamped the cases down and i faced it off yes because it was difficult to, you couldn't get a file in or anything no, to no, no, it's just... uh, i thought i could spend hours doing it with that but it was quite a lot yes. so i actually mill that off yes because if you look in i don't know if you've filmed it you can just see a little line yes, it yes. might just want a bit polishing oh, yeah. and yes, fettling yes, yes, yes. um basically then it left this lump in here yes uh, so with what no i hole. did yes uh, oh, so, what, I, what i had to do and this uh i had to re-drill the hole yes uh, i used i measured them in the six mil mm -hmm. And the only thing I had was a six mil drill, mm -hmm. which when I drilled it, it left it a tad loose. Right. But I've actually locked, if you lock tight it in. It's going nowhere. It's going nowhere. No. no. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a, f you know, that it is critical that that is within, a v you know, it's, it's very much in the ballpark. Because if it doesn't, your oil hole for your bearing won't line up. No, no. So a plus, it can. Right. Yeah. Well, I think the reason why it broke in the first place is because that bend was chattering and that hole what once a cracked was overlized and that's why we knew it was wrong because it that that pin was loose what it was else there. can happen is if then if the pin falls out and anything drops in muck or crap yeah. someone could push the pin in and if they bolt the crank in and don't realize it if there's anything in there and it's too ta it, it can it, it can then try and burst it out yes it's too high yeah okay that could be another reason that somebody has badly built the well, engine. Who knows? Who knows? We, no, we we don't know no, on that. We don't know. Well, what I want to know is how did you return to um, this nice curved well, surface? Well, funnily enough, you should say that. This is why I got that out. Oh, okay. <laughs> and in the drill, I managed to get in there. Yes. And just very carefully, what I did was marking ink. Yes. Where the the original bearing surface was. Yes. I put acetone it off, put yeah. some marking ink on it, yeah. and I just kept just polishing away. This is inside the when it's on yeah, the Yeah, on a drill, just doing it by hand. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. And I got it, uh, I've machined my mandrels over there. Yeah. Uh, you can't use, a, I've got a crank bearing, but you can't use them because they're too tight. Yes. So it won't drop in. Right. So what you need, they're 62 mil. Mm -hmm. So what I've got is a 61.85. Okay. Mandrel. Aluminium mandrel. Which will drop in. Which will drop in. Mm -hmm. And I think I've got one a fraction smaller. Right. And what I did do is I took 95, well, to quote, I got it. Close. Very close with that. But not too much. And I kept, you know, and you could just see when it just scuffed the marking ink. Right. Um, oh, I drilled the hole. Yes. Um, I had to set that up while it was on the yeah, miller and I that. face that off. I then put the chuck on mm -hmm. so I, I worked out the distances between them two use these cases as a datum yeah and then uh, drop the drill into that one and then come along drop the drill oh sorry measured across then when i put your cases on i knew exactly how far to go minus the obviously the diameter i yes. knew exactly the center to point. within yes. all right uh, yeah. Well, yeah. To within a few it's hundreds of a mil. Yes, the good. bearings actually float, so it's you'd have to be seriously, you'd have to be a mil or plus yes. out, I think, to cause a problem. Okay. You know, that way. Uh, so what we did was, anyway, once we had the hole in, I just kept fettling it with mm -hmm. that. Yes. Trying this mandrel in until I, I was looking down it to see daylight. Yeah. Once I got it 
near enough, I got the smaller mandrel with mm -hmm. some... I this think, is like 8.5. Yeah, I think it was about 80, it might have been 100 or 120 grade, and yeah. I just kept turning it oh, okay. on it. By hand? By hand. Okay. And then once I got that near enough, I, and I was using a magnifying glass oh, as good, well. Good, good, good. <laughs> Checking it. Wherever my trusty magnifying Yeah, just looking. And then I got the bigger one with some other whatever grade it was one of them and yeah is it that one could or four hundreds yeah basically what i did is just get a mandrel and just with keep turning it with just wet and dry yeah. and just keep rotating it yeah until basically right. where the blue ink was it just started to scuff it yeah and then you and know you were close there was a part where there's a bit of blue ink but that's where i might i just took one, once i knew it was scuffing the original bearing points yes I thought, and, and then I dropped the mandrel in, looked down, and I could see, a, you could see a fraction of daylight. Right. So I knew then once I'd got, once the bearing's yeah. gonna, once the original bearing got that, I think that was a fifty-nine, uh, a sorry, uh, a sixty-one point eight five. Okay. It, it, it's about three or four foul mm. under the yes. bearing. Yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, it, it, it it's 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 basically it's it's not it's engineering that you're using your, your hands basically it's all done by hand you're using like your initiative yes yeah you know no, I'm really pleased because I, I didn't think you'd get it back uh, so I just spent 360 quid on the bloody <laughs> camera it, 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 it was a long process what, long but you to be honest even if you'd have took I think I took when I come there yeah. it might have took a fraction much out but yes. don't get me wrong as long as them two bits there are right engage okay yeah then you're okay you'd have to seriously take a lot away for the bearing to start moving yeah yeah so well we did quite a long video with so, les a while ago and um like you say talking about all this and he's in the middle right now of rebuilding the engine so i think the mandrels my, all my mandrels are up there okay, okay this is where over time you build up a lot of little yes. special Useful. tools yes, and yes. you know okay uh, Never have anyone else in your workshop because they say, "Oh, that's a nice piece of metal. That's someone's machine. I'll use that for me space." Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I've been, we, we know, know. where we, we, we know where that goes. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've been tempted to do it in the past. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's good. Th that won't make any sense at all to people. It, it but what I will won't. do is, I but what I will do is, I'll show you a couple of pictures that I've also used in this previous video uh, that I've not yet posted. That will show you. Well, do you want me to get the mandrel? No, no, it's okay. No. It's okay. It's, it's it'll basically show you how a mandrel, and I roll it, and, and I just kept doing that very yes. carefully, looking. Check back in. and two and and, and once it basically sanded it yeah and it and what well, it took a bit of the blue off there and, yeah. and it started to take the blue off there once i got that to that i knew it was getting close very very so then i put some 400s in or yeah yeah Whatever. It, it might have been 240s mm -hmm. and then just did it with a couple of bit put some more marking ink on it mm -hmm. And then just rotated it and do it slowly yeah. and, and then tried it and thought yeah okay so yeah. you don't need some high-tech equipment sometimes it's, you just need a bit of time don't get me wrong care. You, I, you, you'd never get it as perfect as what a machine oh no machine no. it round. But it's good enough mate but I'm happy working with your two day some points off the off where the bearing sits yeah. well actually also quite lucky because you've because you've got other cases that are the same that you can use as a guide if i didn't have any cases yeah you it would have been a more difficult bugger okay. of a thing but right okay good and with that Oh, hang on, there is one more thing. Oh, gold. Back clutch. I, I hope I've made sense to oh, people. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You, well, it makes sense to me. I think, I think some people will get the gist yeah. of how It would how help if it. I yeah. showed you the pictures that I've yeah. got, so we'll do that as well. Well, point. like you say, it was a long milling cutter just to get that bulk yes, off it in there yes, so the yeah. web didn't okay. hit it. And then basically just a little tungsten cutter. hand cutter. Yeah. But basically, um, couldn't use a flat one. It had to be like a bullet shape one because mm -hmm. you, you've got to go in at an angle so you don't your chuck doesn't catch. Yeah. Okay. So you just basically got to keep just do it really. Careful. It's just it's just do Time. a bit, try this. Right. We'll hit the rain. It's raining again. So uh, so I think we'll end it there, and we'll leave you to your machining of your um, your cases.